This is part 7 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing our first Blazor component, employee list component. We want this component to display list of employees as you can see right here. We have already created this component in our previous video. Notice in the pages folder, we have employee list component. At the moment, we are using this single file approach, meaning both the HTML markup and c -sharp code are present in the single file employee list dot razor. For ease of maintenance, better readability and unit testing, we want to move c -sharp code into a separate code file. We want to use the base class approach. So to the pages folder, let's add a new class file. Remember, we can name this file anything we want, but it's always a good practice to follow a naming convention. We are going to use the same name as the component, but suffix the word base. So here, our component name is employee list. So the class that contains the C-sharp code will be employee list base. For this class to be the component base class, it has to inherit from the built-in component base class. Bring in the required namespace. Let's do that by pressing control period. And then to link this class with this component, let's use inherits directive. And then specify the name of the class, employee list base. At this point, both the component class and the view file are linked. So we don't need this code block anymore. What should this component do? Well, it must display the list of employees as we can see right here. So to hold this list of employees in the component class, let's create a public property. So type prop and then press tab twice, we get the stub and we want this property to hold the list of employees. So let's create I enumerable of employee. And remember, this employee class is present in this models project and we already added a reference to the models project from within our Blazor web project. So if I expand the projects node, we can see a reference to the models project. So let's bring in the required namespace by pressing control period. And then let's name this property employees. Our obvious next question is, where are we going to get the list of employees from? Well, in a real world application, we will either get the list from a database table or by calling a server side service. For the purpose of this demo, we are going to hard code the list of employees within this component class itself. And as we progress through this course, we'll discuss how to retrieve this list by calling a server side restful service. So for now, within this component class, let me include a private method that contains the hard coded list of employees. As you can see, the code inside this method is pretty straightforward standard c -sharp code. Nothing really Blazor specific. We are creating a new employee object E1 and populating all of its properties. Similarly, we are creating another employee object here E2 and then E3 and then finally E4. So we have four employee objects and then populating our public employees property that we have created right here by creating a new list and then assigning all these hard-coded employee objects to this list. And if we take a look at one of the employee objects, notice the photo path property. It is referring an image in the images folder. Remember, all of our static files will be present inside this www root folder. So to this folder, let's add another new folder. Name it images. We want to include all the employee photos in this folder. I have them in a separate folder. So let's copy from there and then paste them inside this images folder. Now, the next important question that we need to answer is from within our employee list component, where should we call this private method load employees? Well, Blazor components have several lifecycle methods. On initialized async is the most common lifecycle method. We'll discuss all the Blazor component lifecycle methods and their purpose in detail in our upcoming videos. For now, let's use on initialized async and then call this private method load employees. Notice when I type override and then press the space bar, we can see all the methods that we can override. We have on initialized and its async counterpart on initialized async. 
all component life cycle methods have synchronous and an asynchronous version. Data retrieval is usually an asynchronous operation. So let's use on initialized async. All we want to do here is call our private method load employees. This method initializes this public employees property to which our view binds to. First, let's include a space between these two words and we're going to use bootstrap card deck to display employees like this. So let's include a div element and then use the bootstrap class card deck. We want to loop through the list of employees that we have in this public property employees. So let's use a for each loop. Let's call the loop variable employee in our collection property employees. As we are looping through each employee, we want a bootstrap card to display the employee details. The code that you see here is standard HTML and some bootstrap styling classes. Now, in the card header, we want to display the employee first name and last name. So for that, inside the card header div, let's include an h3 element and to retrieve the employee first name, we use at and the loop variable employee and notice when I press dot on that, we get IntelliSense and we see all the employee properties. So we want to display first name, space and then the employee last name. Just below the card header, we want to display employee photo. So for that, let's include an image element. For styling, let's use the bootstrap class card img top and then set the image source attribute to photopath property. Finally, just below the employee photo in the card footer, we want these three action buttons, view, edit and delete. They don't do anything at the moment. We'll implement their functionality in our upcoming videos. In the interest of time, I'm going to paste the required HTML. Again, there is nothing Blazor specific here. This is standard HTML and some bootstrap styling classes. So we have a card footer. Within that, we have three anchor elements displaying view, edit and delete buttons. With all these changes in place, let's run our project and see what we have so far. There we go. We see the list of employees as expected. At the moment, these employee photos have different heights and widths. So to fix this within site.css, let me include a CSS class. As you can see, this class sets the height to 200 pixels and width to auto. And let's include this class on the image element that displays the employee photo. While we are here, let's also open the main layout component which is present in the shared folder and on this div that renders the body, let's include the bootstrap class container. Again, this is for styling. Let's save all these changes and then reload our web page. There we go. All the images now have the same height and width. If you want these images, the code and the HTML, I will have it available on my blog and include the link in the description of this video. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.